It's a, it's a huge uh, uh, honor to be here. Let me just get that started. Um, fantastic honor, and so tonight I'm really here to, uh, to talk about uh, two challenges in biophotonics in the microscale medical imaging of, of soft tissue. Um, the first of those is that uh, we often find ourselves in the scenario where we can't penetrate through enough tissue. Um, and uh, the second is that when we do, or if and when we do, uh, we often don't have sufficient uh, um, contrast to discern some of those uh, tissue structures. And so we've been working uh, on the first problem with uh, the microscope in a needle, and, and we've been working on the second problem by adopting a, a range of parameters that extend OCT. Um, including uh, the measurement of uh, microvasculature. And so tonight I'm going to focus on telling you about uh, two of our pieces of work in that area. One is the microscope in a needle technology and the second uh, is the imaging of stiffness or the utilisation of mechanical contrast using OCT. So um, for the last few years we've been developing the capacity to connect uh, small pieces of glass uh, into making fibre microprobes. And, uh, and these probes have been put in hypodermic needles of a, a range of sizes uh, down to about 300 microns and we've been directing the beam uh, sideways from these needles uh, and rotating the needle or, or um, push-pulling the needle in order to create three-dimensional images. And those images actually are pretty much more or less now as good as you can get with a free space optical coherence tomography system or a system with a much larger sample head. Uh, you see here an image of uh, the needle being held between the fingertips. That's a, a sort of radial image of skin. Uh, this is uh, showing that in uh, membranous, uh, relatively low scattering structures, you can see a very long way. The hole in the middle there is about 640 microns. Um, and so with these systems, um, we've been interested in tackling uh, a range of of problems. But in order to do that, we've been uh, technically investigating a, a whole raft of, of particular uh, innovations in extending the performance of the optics and adding functionality to those systems. And in the last year or so, we've been focused on combining OCT with fluorescence. Uh, and we've also been uh, interested in the combination or the measurement with OCT of polarization or birefringence. And so I'm going to tell you particularly about that latter one uh, later in this talk. But um, in terms of application, we've been applying these needle probes to a bunch of basic physiology problems um, in airways, in muscle tissue, um, and, uh, but really our passion is to find a, a human translational application and particularly in breast cancer. And so um, we actually, uh, a couple of years ago, demonstrated that we could um, identify or clearly uh, tell the difference between tumour and, and essentially adipose uh, in, 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 um, in breast cancer, human breast cancer, freshly excised human breast cancer samples. But there's a problem uh, that we hadn't been able to address on every occasion, and that is that we can't tell just by looking at the scattering signature the difference between uh, solid uh, tissue which is benign and solid tissue which is tumorous because we can't actually see the cancer cells. And so we've been thinking about how to improve that uh, situation. And so uh, we've been looking at a range of possibilities there, fluorescence being one, uh, birefringence, uh, stiffness and attenuation. And, uh, and so I'm going to tell, tell you a little bit about um, those latter two in the remainder of this talk. Um, there is a talk by Martin Villiger uh, on uh, Tuesday at 4pm that will expand upon uh, our work on polarisation sensitive OCT in a needle. So this is the slide which demonstrates, I think, rather an exciting result, and that is that um, you can see contrast. Uh, you can see contrast in the in this region here, uh, which is very nicely differentiating uh, the benign uh, stroma tissue, which has higher birefringence because of its more ordered and structured and greater quantity of collagen, uh, with the uh, tumorous tissue, which has a lower level of of collagen and more disordered structure. So it typically shows lower birefringence. I think you can see, if you look closely, they're very good correspondence uh, with the histology and a great deal of difficulty in, in differentiating that from the straight uh, OCT image. So we think that's uh, a very exciting development in, in adding an additional contrast to, to the standard OCT measurement. There's a lot of other people doing some great work on needle probes. Brett Boomer reviewed endoscopy uh, applications last year. Um, since then, I would really just want to highlight a couple of things. I think of this slide in particular, the work by MKT Technologies resonates quite a lot with the pancreatic cancer that uh, Melissa spoke about in the, a moment ago. Uh, they're using a 19-gauge needle, and, uh, and this is now a commercial system which is um, being uh, um, really making progress around the world, and it's great to see that. 
So I just want to uh, talk a little bit about our imaging of stiffness. This is um, uh, indeed an emerging area. There is a sub-conference uh, which Kirill Larin and I co-chair here. This is the third uh, uh, year running that we've run it and, and it's certainly a growing and exciting area. Please think about coming to see Dennis Disher's uh, fascinating uh, plenary on Sunday at 1.20 in the area of cell mechanics or mechanobiology. I think this is a potentially rich area for, for the people in this room. Um, but one particular area that uh, is going very well is optical coherence uh, elastography. And in, a set, in essence, what we're doing here is we're utilizing the capacity of OCT in its axial direction to be able to measure with nanometer sensitivity very small deformations of tissue. And so what we do is we press on the tissue in the particular version that we use. There are a whole raft of variations of, of these, these technologies, but we basically compress the tissue at the micron scale, and then we measure that, uh, that displacement in the tissue at the nanometer, even sub-nanometer scale. Um, and this is what we see when we, do, uh, when we do this in breast cancer. So we have the OCT image sitting in the middle of that slide, and in that OCT image you can clearly differentiate adipose from solid tissue. And you see that nice match with histology. But the lower part of that image is essentially all tumour, and the upper part is essentially uh, all uh, stroma, so all benign. And if you look at the texture, uh, you see a very significant heterogeneity in the tumorous tissue versus the non-tumorous tissue. And this is a signature that we see time and time again in the pr pretty significant number of samples that we've now had the opportunity to look at. And these are all fresh excised uh, in the OR next to the, um, next to the surgery. And so what we're now doing is actually being able to scale this up, and you will be able to listen to a talk on Monday from, uh, from Wes Allen, who will talk about uh, looking at whole lumpectomies. Um, at the moment, we can't quite go fast enough to actually do elastography over the whole of that 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter field of view. So what we're doing is we're using the OCT to guide us to the suspicious solid tissue, and then we're doing uh, elastography on the remainder. And again, um, if you look at this particular uh, example, it's very exciting because because uh, it shows two regions. It's actually the first case we've had of a wide local excision that has a positive margin. And indeed, you can again see that clear textural difference between the malignant uh, and the healthy tissue. But the me measurements that I've shown you so far are actually all of strain. And so they're all a relative measure. You can't actually transfer that absolutely from sample to sample or from even from day to day. And so we're interested in actually trying to quantify this technology. And to do that, um, we've actually developed uh, the capacity to measure stress at the surface by using a transparent layer. And then essentially using that to scale the volume strain. And you can see in that particular image the dramatic improvement in contrast that that gives us between tumor and non-tumor. Again, in the OCT image, it's very difficult to tell between the two. And in fact, if we look at the original strain image, we do get some contrast, but it's greatly enhanced by the use of the layer. So we think that's an exciting development uh, in terms of, uh, of characterising tumour for longitudinal studies for a range of different studies. Um, there is a lot of other great research going on in this space. Um, there is work in, in uh, optical coherence elastography and ophthalmology, but there's also very exciting work in Bruan microscopy. We had a fantastic session this afternoon at the conference, a full set of Bruan talks. Um, there's uh, a stretch goal in cardiology. We are very excited about the prospect of being able to do these uh, types of measurements in situ in, in, in arteries, but uh, that's still to come. Uh, and I think there is a huge opportunity in cell mechanics. Some people are uh, 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 working on Bruan microscopy such as uh, Andy Yoon and, and uh, Giuliano Scarcelli and uh, Amy Oldenburg are getting an early march on that, but I think that field uh, is uh, open for a great deal of further discovery, tools that uh, we can uh, bring to bear in cell biology. Um, the last thing I'd like to leave you with is uh, just never forget the capacity of resolution. So we've been building a higher resolution version of an elastography system. Uh, in this system we have about a little under 2 microns in resolution uh, and uh, over about 100 micron depth of field by utilising uh, Bessel beam architecture. And so this just shows uh, a mouse aorta uh, at the higher resolution and at the standard resolution. And the top two panels you can see there, one is OCT and one is OCM, optical coherence microscopy. And you can see in the OCM all the beautiful elastin structures um, that you can't actually see in the original OCT image. Now we've done elastography with that too and the two panels below that represent the old way we did elastography at about 10 microns resolution and the new way at sub two microns and you can see the great in, in additional enhancement of the morphology of that sample. So contrast um, can sometimes be simply enhanced by resolution. I would say keep that message in mind.
Um, so I've talked about these two challenges in biophotonics that we're working on. I hope you found it interesting. I'd like to acknowledge a great team of people that I work with back in Perth, Western Australia. They're all, uh, most of them are here, but uh, a lot of the rest of the ones back in Perth are uh, suffering under the summer heat. Um, uh, they're a great bunch of people, and uh, let me acknowledge them by name, particularly Brendan Kennedy, uh, who's been doing all the work on elastography, uh, Rob McLaughlin uh, and Dirk Lorenza on the microscope in a needle. Um, thanks very much.